and start this meeting. And tell, I have a little background music going on too, so everybody let me know if it's too loud. <laughs> I don't hear it. You'll hear in just a moment. Everybody hear that? No. <laughs> okay. Well, that might not work with it. But we're going to go ahead and uh, open up this presentation here. So now we have streaming on Zoom. And this is going to teach you how to stream Toastmasters meetings onto your Facebook. Here's what we'll cover. We're gonna cover how to stream meetings from Zoom to Facebook, which is a really easy process. So I added a few more things that I thought would be really of value to everybody. We're gonna talk about equipment for a quality stream for Facebook. We're gonna talk about adjusting your settings on Zoom, different backgrounds, video settings, and things like that we can work with. And finally, we're gonna talk about some royalty-free music pictures and video sites. And you'll see I've used some of them here. So these are really cool because you can go online and find the pictures or videos and things that you need, and they're a lot of fun. How to stream on Facebook, part one. So the first thing you're gonna do and don't worry about getting all these too quickly because I have some slides, some screen captures in the next few pages that are going to show you exactly what to do. And I'm going to send this out to everybody involved here tonight and everybody in Toastmasters as a PowerPoint or Keynote if you have a Mac. And you'll be able to kind of see these steps one by one. So don't worry too much about trying to keep up. So the first thing you're going to do is open up your Zoom account and you must have a paid account to stream on Facebook or YouTube. The paid accounts, they started about $14.99, and depending on the level that you do, and that's a month, depending on the level that you do, you can stream up to 100 people with a basic or with a pro account, and then it goes up from there, which I think it caps out at about 300 people. After you go to your Zoom account, you're going to go to settings, and you're going to scroll down under meetings all the way to meetings advanced. You're going to go to allow live streaming. And then you're going to make sure the switch is clicked on and that Facebook is checked. Okay, so here you see we're going to settings. And you're going to scroll down to in meetings advanced. Scroll down a little further and you're going to see allow live streaming. And in the right hand corner, there's a little switch and you're going to make sure that's switched on and then make sure anywhere you want to face, you want to stream is checked. This custom live streaming is if you want to stream on a service like Twitch or some other service that's maybe not as widespread as Facebook or YouTube, but there's a lot of cool ones out there that you have an option to do. How to stream on Facebook part two. So after you've done that, you're going to launch your meeting, going to set it up. And on the bottom right side, right hand side of your screen, you're going to see an option that says more with three little dots. You're going to click that and then go to live on Facebook. And at that point, you're going to be taken to Facebook. So you're going to choose where you want to share and that your choices for where you want to share. You can share to a group. You can share to your personal page. You can share to someone else's personal page and wherever you do, it'll stream. After that, there's going to be a slight delay when you're actually streaming on Facebook. So anybody who comes onto Facebook or YouTube or whatever you're streaming on isn't going to be able to actually interact with your meeting on Zoom. However, they will be able to put comments on whatever site they're on. So you see here, you're going to go to more and you got the three little dots and you're coming here to live on Facebook. Then you're going to come over here to, when you're brought to Facebook, you're going to go to share wherever you want to share. And you'll see the options here. You can share on your timeline, on a friend's timeline, share in a group. And that's what we're doing right now. We're sharing in 
the District 55. You can share on an event too, if you want to publicize your event and maybe do a little marketing beforehand to create that event. So different people can come to it on Facebook or YouTube or whatever they want to do. Or you can share it on a page that you manage. I'm, uh, I'm the president of Aquavidite uh, Toastmasters. So I could manage, I manage that one. So I could share this to that uh, page as well. All right. So you'll see here in the worst picture of me ever taken, this is our, uh, this is one of the streams that we did for Aqua Vidi. And there's a couple of our members. You'll see Kathy up here. This was a really fun one. It was actually about sci-fi that we did. And we talked about different sci-fi stories because Megan always has a really great way of keeping up with those. And we also have uh, Lisa, who was actually on a, um, a, a, a candidate on The Apprentice a few years ago. She's a very successful person. She used to work for the city here in, in Corpus Christi. But this was a really fun meeting that we did. And this is actually a playable link. When you look at this later on, you can actually see how it looks on Facebook. But this is also, if you look at me, this is also kind of a commercial for maybe getting your lighting and your camera angles and things like that correct because, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I look great there. So now we're going to go into equipment for a great stream. And the four things that I think are really kind of essential is you need a microphone, a camera, a green screen, and something to light your way. And these all have links to some of these options in case you do want to click on these and maybe pick up some of these. You'll see a USB microphone for your computer will give you the best sound quality. But you do need a USB port on your computer. So USBs, they're not gonna work with your phone if you decide to zoom over your phone. I'm using the Yeti Blue right now, which is a really, really quality option. It's if it's a little bit expensive, it can run you a little over $100. I don't know. Um, it's That's expensive to me, so I, I don't know if, if you want to drop out and grab one of those. Uh, I do have a link to a cheaper option as well that's really popular on, on Amazon. But this is just going to give you a little bit better sound, make you pop, sound a little bit more professional. The next thing is the camera. And so this picture is the Logitech C9 220. And that's the most popular live streaming, um, live streaming webcam that you can buy right now. It's the one that most people use if they stream over Facebook or Twitch or anything like that. And it's going to shoot at 30 frames per second. You can buy some better ones that you're going to stream at 60 frames per second, but it shoots in HD. It's going to stream in HD about 1080p resolution, and it has a 78% field of view. Now, what your field of view is how big how much behind you it can catch, like how big the picture it's going to give you. And it can give you a nice depth to your stream. There's a couple other ones that have about a, up to a 90% field of view. Or if you want to buy a DSLR camera, a really expensive one for your streams, those can have a big, big view. But those can run really, really expensive. This one runs about $50 to $60. Usually, what's kind of been unfair is right when the pandemic started, Everybody wanted one of these. So all these companies are charging about $100 for these, which is kind of uncool. Another option, if you don't want to spend the money on a, on a webcam, is actually what I'm doing right now. If you go to this site called iriun.com, and what it's going to let you do is use your camera, your, your smartphone as a camera, and then stream through your computer. So basically, my phone is, is hooked up to my computer, and we all know how bad your webcam in your computer is for some reason. I don't know why they haven't gotten that right yet, but we all know how great your phone cameras are. If, if anyone has an iPhone, I know I have, an, I have an iPhone 8. My wife has an iPhone 10, which is just beautiful. And it kind of makes me mad how good a picture she's able to take. But so basically what you'll go to here, do here is you'll go to irion.com. You'll download the app for your smartphone. Then you'll download the app on your computer and you'll open it up on your phone and your computer, and it's going to connect via Bluetooth. And what I like to do is actually connect it USB to my computer. I feel like it works a little bit faster. I don't get as much lag in that situation. If you do have any questions, 
it's pretty self-explanatory on the website, but if you do want to ask me, shoot me an email, I'll be glad to walk you through the process. Next thing we're going to talk about green screen. So as you can see, you do have your green screen and that's going to make these effects behind you really pop as if you want to add a background or a picture or something like that, or even a video, my, my computer, doesn't have the specifications enough to be able to do videos as my background. You, there's a few specifications for Zoom that you have to meet, but I can make my pictures look really good in my background. So I, I added a, a link to a green screen. I think mine was maybe 20 bucks because I, I only p purchased the actual green screen. And I have it set up in my garage with a couple of weights holding it down on an overhang behind me. But you can also buy, as you'll see in the picture, some different kind of stands and some different kind of clips that will hold it up. And you'll see those, if you do click this link, it's gonna take you to Amazon to a green screen that's actually pretty good quality. And it has a, a couple of links to also some clips and things that you can buy. The next thing is your lighting. So what I'm using is a ring light. And I think that's what's really popular for a lot of different YouTubers and a lot of different streamers is they'll use just a ring light right in front of their face at about eye level, make it a little bit warm. Uh, warm is, is the different way you can light your face. Um, you, you can do it kind of in a, a cold light, which is going to bring out a little bit of darker shades. Uh, if you bring it into um, like a, a warm light, it's going to bring kind of some uh, reddish tones and things like that to my face. And that's kind of how I have it right now because I'm extremely white right now because I haven't been able to go outside from the quarantine. I have no tan at all. It's kind of gross, but you can get a ring light. There's also some other options you can do for, uh, for professional lighting or any kind of lighting effect you want to do. This is probably enough with just the ring light and then an overhead light behind me looks pretty professional, but if you want to go crazy about it, look really good. You can also add some lights to the side of you on either side, a little bit from below. That's really going to bring out those different facial features and things like that. that are going to make you look a lot more attractive. <clears throat> so some of these also have a holder for your phone, but the best light is always going to be natural light. If you can stream with a, like in front of a window facing the sun, that's always going to be the best the best light, but you can't really depend on that, especially at night right now. I can't really go outside and there's no sun. I could do the moonlight, but that's going to make me look like a vampire. So the next thing we're going to do is adjusting your settings on Zoom. And you'll see this uh, model we have here. He's got antlers because it's Christmas. And we're going to go here. We're going to go through backgrounds, a few video tips to kind of change your appearance over Zoom. <clears throat> and then one tip to get better audio, although I'm not the best person to talk to this right now because I did have a, a computer difficulty that wouldn't let me use my audio that I had for this. So we're gonna talk about backgrounds and filters. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna click the arrow next to the camera, click video settings, <clears throat> and then go to backgrounds and filters and choose whichever background or filter that you want to. And there's a lot of cool ones. So you'll see here, I've gone to video settings after clicking the little arrow beside the camera on the left-hand side of your, or bottom left of your screen. Sorry, there's a slight delay here. Drive me crazy. And then you'll go to background and filters here. And then after you go to that, there's a lot of different options for, for different backgrounds. And you can also add, download different backgrounds from your photos as well. The next thing we're gonna talk about is video settings. So you're gonna click the same arrow next to the camera and after you do that there, you don't have to do anything else, but you'll see two sliders. One is for touch up my appearance. And that's, that's good for me sometimes if I just wake up and I have to attend a Zoom meeting and I'm looking rough in the morning, but I can just make it 
make it do a little bit of Photoshop to myself so I don't look quite as rough. And then there's another one for adjust for low light. And if you don't have a professional lighting set up, you can actually bring more light into your photo by a filter on Zoom. So here, video settings. And here's your two toggles that you're gonna decide how you wanna do this. I personally had it a little bit higher for touch up my appearance. I'm a little vain, not gonna lie. So now we're gonna talk about getting better audio because I think we've all had that situation where we're playing some audio in the background and it's coming through the, it's actually coming through the computer and everybody can hear it <clears throat> but there's situations like lag or it'll go at a different rate for different people and it just won't sound good. You, you have that, that sound of being put through a computer like it's coming through a fishbowl and it just sounds weird. But there's actually a way to share it through your Zoom so everybody streams the same music that you are the same way and they can hear it at the same rate. So you're going to click the share screen button at the bottom of your screen then you're going to choose advanced. After that, you're going to choose music or computer sound only, then click share. And your sound will be have less lag and be better quality. And that's just going to share your sound from your computer without sharing your actual screen. If you do want a little bit of sound, maybe while you're giving a speech, maybe an inspirational song. So here you see, you're going to go to share screen. And you'll see here, you go to advanced and then music or computer sound only as opposed to your other options. And then you're gonna click share at the bottom here. So finally, we're gonna talk about getting royalty free music, pictures and videos for your streams, for your backgrounds, or anything else you want to use it for to liven up your presentations or your speeches. So here's the three royalty sites I use. <clears throat> and these are all going to be, these are all links. So when you do get this PowerPoint, if you click that link, you're going to be taken directly to the site and kind of, it'll kind of show you what to do. The first one is YouTube Audio Library. And these are copyright free music that you can use for whatever. And it also has sound effects on there that are really cool. If you want to do maybe a story sometimes, and you can talk about, and the killer walked up the stairs. <laughs> you know, I don't do it very good, but it, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this. And the way you're going to use that is when you go to the actual site, there's a search bar, you can search into it, but there's also another option where you can just click and look for different genres, different types of music, different artists, whatever you want to do. The second one is for videos, and that's going to be called Pexels. <clears throat> and this is going to be a link as well. When you go to Pexels, it has all these royalty-free movies that you can use for your streams, YouTube videos, Facebook videos, advertisements, whatever you want to use them for. And they're really cool. They have different options for everything. They have Christmas options. They have... <clears throat> Um, they have graduation options, they have speech options, anything you want to do to kind of get your point across. Or you can actually use them if you're into marketing. If you want to use maybe a marketing type situation on your Facebook, I use I use uh, iMovie, iMovie, which is actually the video editing software on mine if I want to make a video. But there's ways to add different layouts over your video. Like if I wanted to say, if I wanted to show a little video and then have an advertisement on top, like, please come to our meeting. I could do that with a different video editing software. The last one is Pixabay, and that one's for pictures. And that's actually where I've gotten all the pictures from the site or from this presentation. <clears throat> um, kind of a mixture between Pixabay and Pexels. And it has a lot of cool pictures for whatever you need. And you can just search out whatever kind of situation you're looking for. And if you do use these pictures, you don't have to typically 
say thank or put a link to the author's work for it, the photographer or anything like that, but they do appreciate it. And it's always going to give you a link to add maybe at the end of your presentation. So you can kind of help promote the work of whoever you're using. Now here we have some shameless promotion. I don't know how this got in there. Um, <laughs> this is just for me. I, I used to be a professional film actor. As you can see, this image might not be current. Um, and this is my email if anybody has any questions. This is actually a recent film I was in that's on Amazon. If you click this link, it's about some, some women who have retired and they've been swindled out of their money. And they're actually trying to raise money for their friends' cancer treatments. And it takes them down a few dubious paths. It's a comedy. And I think it's really great for the holidays if you do want to check it out. Our last one, this is our, our last video. And we've got, yay, we did it. This is, this is a, something that you can use for Pexels just to kind of add a little bit of oomph. There's a lot of different videos to your, that you can add with your streams. And so as you see, I've attributed the different people that I've used on here. If you click these links, you can see different pictures or videos that they've done and kind of use those. Well, as, as you've seen everybody, that's kind of how you stream. That's kind of how you use some different tools for streaming and how you can kind of make it a little bit interesting. So I really hope you learned something. And I, I hope that Maybe you got something out of this presentation. There's also a different, a few different tools you can use for marketing that would be for a whole different conversation. There's one of them that's really cool that I just found out about that actually you can put about five different advertisements and it'll, it'll use each one for about a week on your Facebook and keep rotating them out without you having to do anything. Um, and I, I can't remember the, the name of that one at uh, tip of my mind. but I'll be glad to share it with anybody if anyone wants to email me or has further questions about this. But I want to just say thank you so much. And I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. This has been a wonderful time. Thanks so much, Paul. And will you put your email in the chat so people that want to ask you questions, because I know there's probably several questions about in particular about what you're what you did and what you told us, but we will have this recording available on the, the resource library. And we'll also have a copy of the PowerPoint. He said he could get it to you if you'd like to have a copy. So thanks so much for doing this. And Melody and I have talked about maybe we can do another one, another kind of live streaming event now that we've kind of gotten our feet wet and we've, we know a little bit more how to do it anyway in maybe a next quarter and get it out there to prospective members, but try it in your own club. It's, it's really as simple as he showed it. So thank you so much for doing that. If you have a copy of the agenda in front of you, I do not see our table topics master, but I do see our prepared speaker and our evaluator. And she's the one wearing the crazy hat, the crazy Santa Claus hat. Well, one of the ones wearing the crazy Santa Claus hat, Miss Nancy Graves hat. I, we loved all of her speeches, all of her stories in the Corpus Christi area. And she has graciously agreed to share a Christmas story with us. So please help me welcome our area director in Corpus, Nancy Graves. I'm clapping for y'all. <laughs> y'all are great. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody, and happy holidays. As we go through this season of December, the different December, I thought today, as we're having our different year and our different experience of 2020, that I would share some things about myself in a list of top 10 Christmas gift ideas. These are things I think would be good gifts. Maybe you do too. It might give you an idea or 
but I think it'll help you to get to know me a little bit better. So number 10 on the list, I decided socks were a good thing. I cleaned out my sock drawer this morning, took all the unmatched ones and threw them away, the ones with holes in the heels and threw, the, threw those away, cleaned out some of the ones that I had purchased that I can just donate because they're still new because I never wore them because I don't like them. And I decided to buy myself some nice socks. And then I thought that's a good gift for everybody. Who doesn't want nice, comfortable feet in your shoes? The second one, number nine, is the gift of time. Instead of purchasing things like socks, anybody can do that. If you can share your time with your special person, as they say, children don't notice a dirty house. So if you're spending your time running around, cleaning your house, preparing for the holidays, a better use of your time might be to sit down and play a game or bake something together and spend time with people. So time is my number nine. Number eight is in the same vein, sharing an experience with one of your family or loved ones or friends. An experience I think is a little bit even more special than time because you might spend some time planning it. It could be something that we can do in these times. It could be something as simple as a bike ride. It could be a camping trip. It could be a kayaking trip. All these things are things I like to do. You probably have your own experiences that you'd like to do, but actually making that effort, picking a date and giving that as a gift to somebody. We're gonna do this today. We're gonna to do it on the first weekend in January. I already bought the tickets and we're going. Share that experience. That is a great gift that people will remember. Number seven, food. Who doesn't love food? Good food. And I encourage you, and I encourage myself, to go for the whole foods. Don't go for the junk. Spend time making something from scratch. Making it from the very basic ingredients. Vegetables, fruits, meats, if you do that. Cheeses, different things. I love this magazine, Cook Eating Well. I find the recipes really easy yet healthy and based on whole foods. When we eat whole foods, our bodies know what to do with them and they function really well. And you will feel better. We all feel better when we eat whole foods. So instead of reaching for that easy package from the bakery or chocolate off the shelf, think instead how you can keep it to as close to nature as possible with whole foods and you will feel better. And that's a great gift that you can give to your family and to yourself. Number six, who likes to make gifts? Scary, right? I'm married to a craftsman. He's a woodworker. He made this this month for my daughter. She's a knitter. So she asked for a bowl that will her yarn will come out the hole. So I'm married to this man who makes beautiful items. I don't have this gift. He's a perfectionist and he spends a lot of time to make things very beautiful. But what I realized is that I can make really simple things. And last year as gift tags, I made these little angels just with paper and a little wooden bead on top and two pieces of paper and I made the wings. And I put them on the gifts that I did give last year. And I noticed when I went to my family's houses this year that they all had them up on their Christmas trees this year. And I thought, wow, my little piece of paper was better. They'll always remember Nancy made that for me. And so make something. There's all kinds of ideas on the internet. Just Google quick Christmas craft and find something you would make, but don't go crazy. Don't make it take forever. You can't do this. I mean, maybe you can, but just do something, making something. 
If you don't want to make something, number five, buy local. This is so important this year. Our businesses, our local businesses are struggling. A gift card from a local restaurant, a something from a little boutique near your home. Try to find something local. For example, there's a little store in Corpus Christi. I haven't been there in a while, but it's called Made in Corpus Christi. And they specialize in having things that are really made here in Corpus Christi. And I need to go there again before the holidays if I'm going to do shopping. And on that same idea, number four, buy made in the United States of America. This is so important. Not a, you won't just be getting people from our own community, but you'll also be helping people across our country. You'll be helping the craftsmen. You'll be helping the people who have jobs in factories here. I found this site that I use called All American Review. And they review items from socks to furniture. And they'll tell me like, for example, when I was buying socks, maybe five or six companies that make socks in America and which ones make them out of all American materials and which ones import materials. And there's so much information. So you too can take buying a pair of socks from going to Walmart. You can now make it take an hour of your life as you research all the made in American companies. And who has time for that? We all do, right? It's worth it. Buy made in America. It does take time though, and usually costs more, but we are gonna build up our manufacturing. My third item is books. I love books and something new I finally treated myself to this year is an Audible subscription. And for about $15 a month, I get two books that I can listen to. And if I don't get to finish the two books, they build up. So right now I know I have some in my account and I look forward to picking what I'm going to pick. I love to listen to nonfiction. I love to listen to history books. They're hard to read for me to finish a whole history book if I'm reading it on paper. But when I'm listening to them, I, I, they come alive. So I tend to read nonfiction on Audible. And I'm thinking that's a good gift. I have adult children and I'm thinking that might be a good gift for them to get them a year of Audible, which would give them time to read some books that they might not have time to read otherwise. And number two, coming to the top of the list, the very best book, I think, and remember these are my opinions, is the book that has is full of leadership stories, full of challenges overcome, full of inspiration. And for me, and may, I hope for you too, that is the Bible. I think this is a great gift for people who are Christians. There are so many different kinds of Bibles. This one, as you can tell, is very nerdy, Oxford annotated Bible. It even has the Apocrypha, you know, it has like the full everything and lots of notes. And then there's Bibles like this one that are written in plain English, paraphrased almost like a story. I can read this like a story and I can find stories of great leaders like Moses, who didn't want to be a leader just like us, right? We don't always want to be a leader, but God told him, you can do it. I, I chose you and you can do it. And those messages stay with us. So this is something that's very close to my heart. And I want to share with you. The number one thing that you can get somebody for Christmas is a Toastmasters membership. $45. And if you get it in January, I think they're way, well, I'm not going to say it, but we know how much it costs. Reasonable price for a gift for a friend. So think about that. You want to help your friend be a good leader. You want to help your friend 
learn to speak. You have a friend who needs to figure some things out. I find Toastmasters to be very affordable therapy. What do you think? What do you need help with? That It helps you because you have to figure out what are the 10 things I would like for Christmas? Well, now you know more about me. This speech is an icebreaker for my third pathway. And I'm glad you guys got to know more about me tonight. And I look forward to getting to know more about you in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Miss Nancy. You guys, I have kind of voluntold Nancy to do some continuing education classes for us. She has some great stuff on pathways and how to, organ how to organize an orientation program for your new members or prospects. So you'll, you should be seeing information about classes from her coming up. But we, I really appreciate you sharing your holiday gift giving ideas with us. And now we're gonna have Mr. Fred Pena, also of Corpus Christi, to evaluate her speech and tell us what he thought. Come on down, Fred. Thank you, Kathy. Nancy, what a very appropriate subject that you gave today. The 10 things that I would like for Christmas. It reminds me of a Bible verse. You mentioned the Bible as one of them. The Bible verse says, do unto others as you would have them do to you. And so that's what you talked about. You actually talked about doing to others of the things that you would like done to you. And I, I thought that was very appropriate because we get to know you better and you were able to share some good insightful things that we can use during the holidays. Some of the things that I liked about your presentation was that you did share about yourself and we did get to know you better. You were far enough back from the camera that we could see your hand gestures we could actually see what you were doing and you were you were actually telling us and, and showing us what you wanted to, us to do with your with your hands also you had very good eye contact you looked at the camera you did you did very well there and the pace i didn't see the timer screen but the pace was very well you did not rush it you were very well on pace and i thought that was very well done the other thing that I liked was your presentations where you actually brought little demonstrations, the little craft that your husband did. You brought the little angel, you brought the magazines, you, you brought things that actually kept the attention of the group. And I thought that was, that was very well done. One of the things that I did notice at the very beginning of the presentation, and I don't know if it was because you were nervous or whether, or what it was, but well, you were doing this. You were doing this. You were going back and forth. And that was a little distracting. After a while, you, you calmed it down and then you only did it when you had to do it and, and you pulled back when you didn't have to, which was very appropriate. But at the very beginning, you were rocking. So you might wanna be careful with that. Other than that, I thought you did a great job and I really enjoyed your presentation. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks, Fred, for giving us an evaluation. And I wanted to let everybody know that we were having a contest for the best background. I know we just had somebody jump off because she had a, has a bad headache, but if you, not just background, but decorations, because I see a couple of people with live decorations. Oh, there's Wapa's got hers. So anybody that would like to be in the running to win some goodies from us, please turn your camera on let us see your background please don't vote for me because i want you to send me your private chat and tell me looking at these beautiful images on here who do you think has the best background or the best decoration for their their zoom cube and it can, like I said, it can be live decorations or it can be virtual background, whatever you think. Send them to me in the private chat. And while we're doing that, 
since I don't know what happened to Jason, although I do know he's working a lot of overtime. Melody, do you want to do start us out maybe on round robin table topics about Christmas? Don't you love how I volunteered you for stuff? That was expertly done. Very well done. <laughs> so send your, your votes to D55 Toastmasters, who has the best background, and Melody's going to ask somebody to give us a table topic. All right. Um, am I going to ask the question? Is that where we're starting? I will start with a question. Um, this holiday season, you have been drafted to work at the North Pole as one of Santa's elves, and your task is to create a brand new toy. Tell us about what you created and how you came up with that idea. Uh, Vic, would you like to take this one? You're on mute. Okay. I can't hear you, Vic. You're on mute. There you go. Uh, were you talking to me? I was, yes. Tell doing... me uh, what the topic was again. <laughs> You've been drafted to to work at the North Pole with Santa Claus as an elf, and your task is to come up with a brand new toy. Tell us what you've come up with. Well, one thing for sure, you won't see me in the North Pole because that's where it's cold and freezing, and I like the sun, and I do not know how to respond to your request, except to say that I will tell Santa, he can uh, ask me to do whatever he thinks is best. Madam Table Topics Master. All right, thank you, Vic. Kathy said we're doing this round robin, so I assume that that means someone else asks the next question. Um, Vic, would you like to ask a table topics question of someone else? Okay, uh, I will ask Virginia Shannon, what would you do if you were offered a coronavirus vaccine tomorrow, will you take it? Thank you, Vic, for calling on me. If I was offered the vaccine tomorrow, yes, I would take it because I think we have had a lot of testing done on it and they seem to have come up with a 95% rate of um, efficiency or reliability. And so I would like to take the virus because I'm tired of thinking that every time I go out of my house, somebody is going to give me the virus. I'm not afraid, but I just think we all worry about whether we're going to get the virus or not. I, I don't know many people who have had it, or I do know some, but they were not sick. I only know of one person that has died, but I think we should all take the virus because then that's the only way we're going to get rid of this horrible thing that we're living with. So let's all go get the virus tomorrow and we'll all be safe. Mr. <laughs> Vic, thank you. Thank you, Jenny. It's your turn to ask a question if you'd like. Yes, well, I'll ask my friend Betty Puckett. I see her on here. Betty, I want you to tell me what's the most fascinating gift you have ever gotten in your whole life for Christmas. Did you hear me? No, say it one more time. 
What is the most fascinating gift that you have ever received in your own life? The most fascinating gift I have ever received in my life. Love in, in, for Christmas or forever is usually a trip because I like to travel and I've traveled all over. So the whole family was going, was, instead of gifts, was going to go on a trip last year. And that was going to be wonderful. Very wonderful. Mark, it was wonderful. <laughs> Except I didn't get to go. But that is the kind of things that I like, gifts that I like to receive. Rather than things or like a pedicure. I've received pedicures or, or nails or haircuts. I like those kinds of things because I don't need anything and I don't want anything in this pandemic. I can't get out anyway. So, Jenny, that's what I like. All right. Thank you, Betty. Uh, now it's your turn to ask a question, Betty. Okay, let's see. Who, who am I going to ask? I am going to ask Wapa. Are you ready, Wapa? Yes, I am. I want you to tell me about a family tradition you had when you were a child. And also, how are you going to celebrate during this pandemic? Thank you, Betty. Family tradition, when I was young, I'm originally from Morocco. For the children, the best holiday was when we received toys, brand new toys. And um, everybody in the family celebrated that, even the adults watching the kids playing with the new toys and see the excitement and all of that. How am I celebrating the holidays during the pandemic, it's gonna be small gathering. My oldest son lives in Missouri. He announced that he was bringing his future wife to meet the family before she says, I do, during the holiday. So I couldn't say, no, you can't come. But they promised that they will take a test. And if it's negative, they're gonna head down to Texas. If it's not, they're staying home. So if they come, it's going to be special because I will be meeting my future daughter-in-law and it would be a nice thing to celebrate during the holiday, especially during these uh, unusual times. Thank you, Betty. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, it looks ask. like we are out of time and we're going to wrap up. So Kathy, what have you got for us? Before we have Melody give, well, I guess you you probably ought to do announcements first if we're going to do it like a contest, and then I'll share the results. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> so I would like to wrap up our meeting tonight with just some basic brief announcements. I uh, just want to remind everyone that uh, applications are open if you or someone from your club or someone from another club that you know is interested in serving as a district leader for the next program year that begins July 1st. The application process is open now and uh, you can uh, send them to the district website tmd55.org for all of the details and uh, directions for how to submit their application to our district leadership chair. Uh, additionally, uh, I'd like to remind you that if you have district bucks left to spend from the last program year, that we are encouraging every club to submit their order by December 15th. And so that deadline is right around the corner. Uh, Every club officer of a club that had district bucks to spend received email from Jean Ramsey, who helped corral all of the information 
And so you might check in with your officer team and make sure that they've placed their order. And if not, time to get it in. Um, and uh, finally, I would like to ask everyone to please have a wonderful holiday uh, and to enjoy this season with your family and um, keep Toastmasters in mind, but we all know what the season's about. So um, we'll be right here waiting for you on the other side of the holiday. We hope that you'll check in with us at the beginning of January when the continuing education program resumes. Uh, we'll also have some great new things on the website in January. We'll have additional promotions for the spring season and lots of fun things coming up. So um, with that, Kathy, do we have a winner? Actually, can we have a drum roll? Oh, absolutely. It was a close race. We have two first place winners. So we, we were trying to use up our inventory of goodies that we have. So we will definitely get you some goodies, something good from Toastmasters. Two first place winners, our wonderful speaker tonight, Paul Montoya, and the always effervescent Miss Betty Puckett were first place in the, in the backgrounds. Second place winners were Miss Barbara Abbott, and Mr. Fred Pena. So congratulations, everybody. Your goodies are in the mail or in the drop-off. And on behalf of the district team, I know you've already gotten feedback from Melody. I wanna thank everybody for joining us on our very first live streaming. This, would anybody like to share any thoughts or put it in chat or unmute yourself and let us know what you thought about the experience. I know we had some rough spots because we're just still learning, but how did you like it? What did you think about it? Anybody want to share? I liked it. And I liked the... <laughs> and I you liked, liked the winning, outcome. too. <laughs> <laughs> and I liked hey, the Papa. We were taught how to do it. So yeah, I, yes. So I took Definitely. some notes, but, you know. We feel like this that. will be really good to help bring in prospective members and we yes. all need them. Yes. Go ahead, Wafa. I appreciate all the time and effort you put into this. It was fun. I would like to request, because I heard about it so much that I would like to uh, experience it. If you can have, you know, the storytelling, the Christmas storytelling that you did oh. in Antonio. I would love for the district to try that uh, in the future. Maybe Gavel Masters could do one, Betty. <laughs> it's easier virtual. We used to do them live, live presentations, and and it is a lot of fun. But yeah, we we can look into doing a storytelling event. Anybody mm -hmm. else have anything they want to share? Yeah, it was Did really. Share? Go ahead, Phil. Oh. Go ahead, Barbara. It was great. Yeah, it was great fun. It was an excuse to get together. It was an excuse to party and to feel Christmassy and to, you know, kind of change up how we do Toastmasters. It was just fun. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Miss Michelle. Yes, uh, good evening. Yeah, it was a long day for me. And I'm glad that you had it at 8.30 tonight. And I really enjoy the fact that you're bringing in people from faraway clubs. Yes. They have a lot of talents. And I think that we are on the, going into the right direction. We need to pull them in, people from Corpus, people from the Valley. And it was a great idea to have the table topic the way that you did it. I wish that they, we have a longer, longer or more opportunity to continue all evening, but some people have to work tomorrow. So That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again to everybody who attended and made this such a great event. We will post it on the website so you can let people know that missed it. Oh, Harrison has something to say. Go for it. Yes, yes thank you so much. I'm Harrison Upright from Austin's or Pride Toastmasters. Oh, great. Thanks. Yes. yes. Yeah. Bart was here also mm -hmm. from Pride Toastmasters. So uh, thank you for the invitation. It was very uh, informative. Uh, 
I was very, very happy that I attended. I'm happy that I attended tonight's uh, party. So thank you for the invitation. You're and quite welcome. Second Zoom meeting. I did a presentation uh, in the previous Zoom meeting uh, that I finished up, and that's why I was late to this one. So uh, not a problem. I'm, I'm tired, but I'm so glad that I <laughs> that I attended anyway, and it, I really learned something from uh, tonight's uh, meeting and get together. So thank you all. Uh, happy holidays to each and every one of you. Thank you, Harrison. Thanks again, Paul, and you know I'm going to be hitting you up to do some more classes in the near future. <laughs> Thanks, I just wanted to say, no. go ahead. Uh, thank you, thank you, everyone, for for having me today. And I will get a working link to that uh, presentation so everybody can kind of have all the information there as well. Maybe send that via email. Okay, sounds wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening. Happy holidays. <laughs>